Yes, uh, we are live. Good evening, everyone. Once again, I, Dr. Priya Vani, on behalf of Academia IPSM eConnect, would like to welcome you all to this 36th PG lecture series on eConnect platform. Today's topic is artificial intelligence and public health aspects. Chat GPT defines artificial intelligence as a branch of computer science that focuses on creating intelligent machines capable of performing tasks that typically require human intelligence. Today, we have with us Dr. Kamal Kishore, sir, Assistant Professor, Department of Biostatistics, PGIMER, Chandigarh. Sir is PhD in Biostatistics from Nimhans, Bangalore. I welcome you, sir, on behalf of IPSM eConnect. Looking forward to hearing from you, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Priya, for the wonderful introduction. So first of all, very good evening, one and all. And thank you, IAPSM and Dr. Priya, for giving me the opportunity. Public health is in dire need of refreshing idea, resources, and repair. At the same time, artificial intelligence has been proposed as the solution to the problem of humans. So, in this time, can we say that artificial intelligence is also going to help us in solving public health problem? So, keeping this in mind, we are going to today dwell briefly or maybe touch upon the intersection of artificial intelligence and public health. Before we move further, first of all, disclaimers. They are a very important part of our life. So the presentation which I have prepared are my personal views. This is my journey, the, the way I view it as and the way I see the artificial intelligence is going to be used. So there is maybe some sort of evidence in what I'll be saying, but don't take all the evidence or whatever I'll be saying on the face value please critically evaluate them. My second disclaimer is, it's not, it will not be a death by PowerPoint presentation where you will be cut with the 1,000 wounds and then you'll be gasping for the ears. So I have only total 26 slides and in that too also, I have only 20 slides to share with you. So we are living in the time of maybe snacking culture so I'm presenting you artificial intelligence in a slacking culture way, which will be easy to digest for you. Third, we are living in unconventional time where unconventional measure of presentation is required. What do I mean by unconventional? In a routine presentation hour, we usually follow a BBC presentation mode. What is a BB presentation mode you're going to ask me? It's a boring, bland, and colorless way of presenting the slides to the students. In today's time, when internet, social media, email, and every nook and corner of the world is vying for your attention, if I'll take the same old route of presentation, it will not be useful. So in contrast to that, I'm also taking a BBC presentation mode, but I have refined it as per today's need. So what is that my BBC presentation mode? It is bold, beautiful, and crisp presentation where there will be not textually heavy driven slides. Now, disclaimers out of the way. I have divided whole of my presentation into the four chapters. This is the first chapter where I'll be just telling you or touching upon the artificial intelligence, which is laying the foundation for our lecture. Now, before we talk about the artificial intelligence, we first of all need to know a little bit of history. It is always important to know our history so that we should not commit the same mistake and improvise. So let me present you a fact. We are making a move from an individual to individualized society where an each individual itself is becoming important. His or her views matter. We are no longer now known or to, we no longer have to be a part of a collective society. 
by this i do not mean to say that you violate all the rules and other things by this i mean to say is that now we are looking ourselves with the different view of mind what is that if you look carefully we homo sapien till the agriculture era okay or before agriculture era was competing with the animal also for food for our protection and for our survival we were not the strongest we were not the biggest right but we were there in the lower in the food chain so there it became very important to be a part of group where we formed alliances so if you go away from the group you are doomed to be a failure and maybe die somewhere maybe a painful death so that is where there is a very strong notion of to be a part of society and this was the first era before agriculture era now as the dawn of agriculture era came on the human being so we came out of the confinement of the jungle and the nat natural ecosystem then we started making our own ecosystem we started modifying we started getting rid of all those threatened places we started protecting our boundary walls we started constructing homes that way what happened more and more people started getting benefit they started participating their life expectancy increase but still we were a part of a community because now maybe the protection was not that much important but we were hailed to be a part of the group where we need to contribute toward the development of the society and industrialization has also fueled this thing due to requirement of industrial industrialization we made another type of industry which is our current education system which we are living where we wanted the people to learn certain kind of the knowledge and make a certain kind of movement and then contribute in a certain ways toward the society then also this is the need for the community was very very important and reinforces you had to adhere to the norms of the group collective consciousness which we call it and this was a situation till most of the internet era or before internet era you can say now mind it throughout our human history if you evaluate this era then and if you think of our evolution as a, on a 24 hour time cycle then for approximately maybe more than 23 and half hour we were in a collective or even maybe 23 hour and a 59 minute we were in that era only so internet is maybe a fraction of second but what did internet do internet when internet came then we started talking about the personalized solution personalized medicine personalized digital ecosystem my personalized or the personal room we started talking about personalized things everything become became personal my mobile if you ask today's youngsters to hand over your mobile they'll say you take my kidney that will be better i'll be maybe share my kidney with you but i'll not share the password of my mobile with you so where we are so even we are staying in the same home under the same roof our universe are totally different and this is what a personalized solution is and this has become possible maybe due to internet first of all and then it is fueled by artificial intelligence but then you're going to ask okay fine these are personalized solution but then do tell me one of those thing do i first of all need a real question arise do i need machine learning and artificial intelligence knowledge or consultation in order to succeed right that's the first question coming okay we are making a move this fine nothing doing there's so many things are happening but do i need to learn in order to find the answer to that question we need to first of all look at the internet it's an important innovation that challenge the three fundamental historical wisdom i'm laying the groundwork for your artificial intelligence and i am following the principle what so what and now what so maybe what has happened 
what is happening and now what i'm going toward the now what okay so bear with me now so after the advent or the dawn of the internet knowledge which was confined to the few ivory tower of knowledge which was the few elite institute few academic individuals the knowledge was consi- confined only to very few people so that is why we always used to feel they should shower their wisdom on us because it was restricted it was very difficult to catch hold of the faculty and then ultimately the philosophy was if we do not understand what the faculty is saying it means we are foolish we do not able to understand the professor must be saying right we never had the audacity to challenge or question them but the internet has changed that perception no every part of the knowledge is available on the internet so we used to guard the knowledge but internet has changed or shattered the very foundation of it so now knowledge is available on the internet so we have made a move from scarcity to surplus of the knowledge right now you see we have made a move from the scarcity to the surplus of the knowledge that is the first conventional wisdom we should get rid of the second is we were always taught that the expertise is a tough you have to work very hard for it and that is why maybe those of you who understand hindi they may understand so our parents used to pressurize us and this to tell us that kheloge kudoge to hoge kharab padoge likhoge to banoge nawab and we were typically day in and day out used to be in academia listen attentively to the lecture and then we were told there are handful of the jobs for which we have to compete and then we used to burn the midnight oil in order to be expert and join the few elite institute but after the advent of internet this is also change expertise so that is why now the word which have started coming is smart work you have to work smartly okay not maybe hard it's a part okay so we need to change that thought what's the third conventional wisdom memory was always considered supreme so we were always told to memorize learn the fact by hard way soft way whatever way it was possible and it was rightly so because for millions of year we lived in the jungles or flora and fauna we never knew the plants there were whether friendly or unfriendly whether by consuming certain plant will die or not die so that is why memory was important whether some animal was friendly or not friendly but in today's time when we have when we have made a digital ecosystem along with other man made concrete jungle and there are so many software does we need memory does the memory require does we require memory to learn so many things if yes then those thing should be different because now the knowledge requirement of the diversity is also changing okay so these are the three conventional wisdom which maybe you should not believe or these are which is challenged by the internet you must say okay this is fine that these conventional wisdom so then the next question come as is the maybe okay then fine these are the conventional which has been told now we education is accessible to us we can now no longer need uh, to memorize smart work so digital ecosystem is the solution but if you look carefully see the solution which was propose previously also reached up to a certain point at a threshold then it start becoming a problem right so similarly does the digital ecosystem has become a problem i do not know yet it could be a solution also the way we want to look at it what did the digital ecosystem does to the academy and to the overall it increased our data storage capacity quantity and quality you are looking at tremendous amount of the data from the internet previously we used to have very few data sources maybe clinics or maybe population surveys 
which was used to be conducted manually but after the advent of internet it has become incredibly easy now to store data and the data quality also video audio text and structured data have become widely available second thing as i am saying is the data diversity you go to youtube for the video and there are some other thing instagram and all those this thing there are multiple format now and you want to make a sense of all the data you can get the knowledge from the podcast also you can get your knowledge from the youtube video also historically we are only we were only looking for the pubmed and the books right so data format knowledge base is changing continuously over a period of time think about today's lecture itself it could not have been possible without the internet or maybe without the strong digital ecosystem right now you are sitting or standing into the cozy room of yours and then you are listening to the lecture at your will and this lecture will available to you later on also right whenever you want to so now we are talking about just in time knowledge whenever i need it i don't have to rely on my memory if i remember there is some good lecture maybe i'll google it as ai in public health i'll get n number of solution so if our data storage and data diversity increases so are our traditional computation technique manual technique are going to solve the problem or do we require novel and innovative solution just hold on to this thought for the some more time i'll come to this thought now so the current status of the computation is we are transcending from the manual to machine based labor what do i mean by this when i'm saying this is the current status so when we started our journey we used to like do the farming manually right we used to make some calculation with the hand we used to make diagrams with the hand we used to write essays with the hand so that is why our teacher used to pressurize to write maybe the peep uh, the uh, uh, people who are above maybe 30 or 40s maybe can able to understand right now there are internet and other things typing and you can even record the lectures we never had those kind of the things books were also considered as costly internet was not accessible most of the things we were doing manually whether physical labor also intellectual labor also then it was machine calculations we then made a move from the manual calculation to machine calculation but this was still supervised by humans is there any typical example yes you can think of it as a calculator where the calculator simplify the process of addition multiplication you don't have to memorize so many about the arithmetic or the multiplications right now you just have to feed the number press the button and then after that and it was supervised by the humans it facilitated some sort of the process but it was human supervised now we are currently living in an era where machine these are machine calculations and these are machine supervised where machines are doing the calculations and machines are supervising it can i give you an example maybe chat gpt could also be one of the example which dr priya has mentioned in her introduction okay so where now we are talking about the reinforcement learning to artificial intelligence feedback what it means so when the when you are giving a prompt or firing a question to the machine in the natural language it is giving you certain answer so now we have programmed this also that the machine could evaluate that answer and then after that it can give itself a reward whether this was a good answer or this was a poor answer so this is machine maybe calculation machine supervise now you must be wondering that if we are going into that stage where machine is doing each and everything what is the role of human just hold on to that thought for the time being human beings are not going anywhere for the time being okay so now let me connect all of this thing with first of all what is known to us right because if you want to go to artificial intelligence first of all we need to know and we need to utilize the existing knowledge all of us 
are standing on the shoulder of giants of our previous generations so this is a shared and cumulative knowledge so let us respect that and so first of all i assume most of you people know about the statistics because you people are routinely using it or you are being taught in your classes although statistics is also called as achilles heel of many of applied researcher so but still this is known to most of us machine learning is still a niche concept for many of the people so let us try to make some sort of the similarities and differences between them the study objective in statistical inference is statistical hypothesis right and we make certain assumption about the data and other thing whereas in machine learning we make predictions and we take a decision on the basis of those this is one broad these are not very fine grain but just to give you some starting point this is one the theoretical assumption the statistics is in theory grounded the assumptions are made explicit so when a statistician tell you maybe most of you people know that the statistician keep on talking about the normality normality assumption and you people always feel that whether the statistician itself is a normal or is he or she is a normal person who keeps on talking about the normality assumption right whereas the machine learning is a flexible and adaptive it keep on changing right it is flexible in the sense it is making adjustment we have made those provision we do have those kind of the algorithm so it is making change data scale in mostly in statistics it is smaller well defined and in computers it is large and complex although i feel this is some sort of esoteric and not a real difference perhaps the collaboration between the statisticians and medical researcher is a very long tradition so that is why we understood their problems and we found a solution whereas the machine learning is sort of a, in many people's mind it's an esoteric concept which have started becoming a trend now only maybe after recent covid or maybe after 2000 or this millennia itself right so perhaps more and more collaboration will happen then we'll hopefully able to solve these problem but for the time being the widely conventional held wisdom in the machine learning model is larger the better so you might be knowing that everybody is claiming we have so many billions of parameter so anyway uh, for the generative model i'm talking about data assumptions in statistics we make specific focus assumption and we ask you to test it whether we are testing it or not testing it that is another issue but we always keep on asking whereas in machine learning we say these are adaptive can change as per situation and not make very rigid assumption learning and relearning in the statistical inference the learning is basically happening manually you are collecting the data you are testing the assumption then after that you are looking at your objective whether it is rejected or accepted and statistical inference you want to make inference about the population level you want to generalize from a very small sample to the population whereas in machine learning depend upon whether you want to generalize to the population to the particular group so different kind of the maybe mechanism are prevalent but the learning in machine thing is automatic and continuous the algorithm is being adjusted that kind of the algorithm we have developed it. so this is what the similarities and differences between machine learning you're going to tell you're going to ask me that okay fine this is machine learning but this lecture is about artificial intelligence the how machine learning and artificial intelligence is related so you can think of it as when you teach your child some alphabets or some numbers and then he or she start using those alphabet or vocabulary in their real life that becomes the human intelligence similarly when you're training the machine to diagnose somebody as having a problem or not having a problem you are teaching a machine that is a machine learning but when you are giving a machine an image or a case and then you asking it whether 
it is positive or negative on the basis of existing knowledge now that knowledge is replicated that is what artificial intelligence is artificial intelligence is broader field and we want to take many work right so that is what artificial intelligence is hopefully now you know the concept of or the broad differences between the machine learning and artificial intelligence now artificial intelligence when i'm talking about artificial intelligence so you must be wondering okay if this is intelligence we are doing so how many type of intelligence are there there are people are defining up to the many type of intelligence so far i think seven or eight i have heard or nine type of the intelligences but i'm not going to talk about all of those things because some of them are theoretical concepts and so on and so forth we are academicians we want to be grounded first of all so as per my limited understanding i feel currently we have three type of ai which is there prevalent and is being used maybe routinely one is narrow ai i it may be perhaps a wrong term as a narrow ai i may call it as a specialized ai or a specific ai what do i mean by that it means if a software is trained to look at the image and tell whether a patient is a positive or negative it's a specific ai trained on a specific data set and is trained to do a certain specific task so this is a specific ai right so that is number one and this is the most of the ai is focus or not is a focus but was focused on this only this required structure data and then definitely most of the structured data was used to build these kind of the things and now we have couple of uh, uh, ai based solution for the specific situations the another kind of the ai as our digital system started expanding we needed a connected system so that is why we call it as a smart home smart phone smart car so these are a sort of a concept of a general ai now to give you a very specific example of a general ai many of you might be using siri alexa in your uh, routine use so those are the example of general ai why those are example of general ai because alexa you can ask alexa to read a news for you that is a different task you can ask alexa to play music for you that is a different task you can ask alexa to maybe switch on your ac that's a different task basically so it can do some sort of a general task you can ask alexa to make a grocery list and then send you maybe email i think that is also possible now so now these are the sort of a general task which ai can do so this is second type of ai general ai which is being used the third type of ai which dr priya has also mentioned as a chat gpt an example could be bard llama bing inflection right there are so on and so forth many example of it so is an example of generative ai you going to ask me what is generative ai a generative ai is an ai which have the capability to generate text image video or anything something of that sort of category just like as human does just like we can create we can write an essay yes generative ai should have the capability to write an essay you can write a project report yes generative ai have the capability to write a project report how to use generative ai and how to get that different kind of uh, the output or a specific output which you are not violating the norm also or ethics also that's all together a different concept how to get the best so for that you perhaps require all together a different setup and i am not addressing that the generative ai component i am restricting myself only to the ai artificial intelligence and not the generative artificial intelligence for that we need to have some separate session with a specific objective in mind okay so this is a generative ai now this was mostly about the introduction about the generative ai now the ch chapter 2 because this is ai in public health so it was public health what 
has and what has not changed into the public health. We need to know, first of all, why do I have to learn about artificial intelligence? Everybody is asking that question. I was taught from so much and so forth of the time. My seniors are not asking me or giving me the time to learn. Shall I go for it, first of all? Then in order to look for that, first of all, we need to know what has changed and what has not changed into the public health. When I look at the public health system, uh, this was the uh, uh, from the artificial intelligence project, which is developed by the Canada and was mentioned in that particular paper, I think is published in Frontier. Uh, my apologies, attributions are not there. Hopefully, I'll give in the link. It will be available on the YouTube. So there, they have divided the public health into the six broad themes under which tasks can be segregated. I'm not going to take, not going to talk much on the public health because you people know 100 times better than me about the public health, but just to refresh our memories and the concept. So our task remains same if you look at health promotion, we were doing from the old ages, health surveillance, we were doing health protection, population health assessment, disease, emergency protection and preparedness. The task remains same. However, what has changed? So with the influx of a digital ecosystem, the whole gamut of data collection, data being everything has changed. The scaffolding has changed. Previously, we used to collect the data manually, door to door maybe, and in some clinical. Right now that has changed social media and in social media also n number of things have come apps smart thing we are talking about speed has changed the scale with which you can go on collecting the data that has also changed the size of the data and internet is such a rich and abundant source of the data so that is why now people are also calling as one field as a digital epidemiology some people are calling as a hybrid field they are vouching for a hybrid field where traditional epidemiology should be merged with the digital epidemiology, right? So different concept anyway, nonetheless, but it is there. Just to give you the context of what I'm talking about, the scaffolding speed and size. So if you look at this, what is possible? If I ask you what you can accomplish in one minute, hardly somebody can say, I can run maybe up to a certain distance, or maybe my mind can wander off to a certain point and I can come back. I can learn something in this 60 second. But you see, internet has changed everything at such a scale. And the data is changing at such a rapid scale. This is a chat GPT. 25,000 visits on a chat GPT are happening in 60 second. You see now, so many people are logging in a point of the time and then how much data is being generated. And this is generated AI. So you are generating more and more data and more and more at speed. And this is just the beginning. This was chat GPT. Then how many photos? You're uploading 65,000. 65, the rich repository of the data. We need to analyze that also in the trend. Six lakh tweets. You see Twitter you might have seen. Previously 10 or 20 year back, you might not have imagined that paper on a Twitter trend and other things will come. But now those are coming. So 6 lakh tweets are being sent. 2 million login are happening on the Facebook. 4 million videos are being watched on the YouTube. 6 million Google users are present. 12 million texts are being set. And at the top is sitting is, I think almost everybody know it, the WhatsApp where 45 million messages are shared in 60 seconds. Look at the speed and scale of the data. We are generating so much of the data. I'm not yet talking about relevant or irrelevant, but yet look at the speed of the data, first of all. Grasp the concept. This is all a part of public health problem. Tomorrow, maybe stress is increasing due to infodemic, and that is what is happening. All of us are living under the form of fear of missing out, right? Oh, I have not done this thing or that thing. People are doing that thing. Social media. So anyway, so we'll discuss this a bit later. But since we are scientists and we always believe 
we take pride in talking in terms of number we say okay and we we rub these things off okay these are some descriptive measures no 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 we we, we don't accept that tell us something concrete in terms of the numbers whether we understand number or we don't understand that's another story okay but we take pride in understanding so let's talk in the numbers what we are talking about so when we are talking about the numbers and generating the data why this is important because this is a very important part of the public health 1005 mb 1 gb i still remember my days few days back the movie used to come in some 300 uh, uh, 370 megabyte or something very few cds Uh, uh, movie CD used to come in maybe GBs. The first CD, Blu-ray CD I saw is of Titanic, nine GB. We were amazed. How can something be like in a nine GB, right? So that is what we are talking about. Just try to grasp now. One thousand GB is equal to one terabyte of the data. All of us have seen one terabyte also. Okay, then. But beyond that, I think not many of us have gone. One thousand terabyte is equal to one petabyte. So then, one thousand petabyte is equal to one exabyte. You keep on multiplying three zero behind ten. Okay, right? Keep on multiplying. An amazing. So now, one thousand exabyte is equal to one zettabyte. You are saying why I am unnecessarily talking about petabyte, exabyte, and zettabyte of the data? Because in two thousand. Thirteen, we had four only four point four zettabyte of data. See, from nineteen seventy or fifty or sixty, the internet has come until two thousand thirteen. You had four point four zettabyte of the data, but by twenty twenty, you had forty four zettabyte of the data. And when you are talking about the smart services, smart home, smart everything, everything connected, this forty four zettabyte is will go where? so now in the internet era things are not happening at the linear scales it is happening at the exponential scale maybe or the non linear scale right that is why the purpose of telling you all of this so you say okay that does make a sense maybe because okay fine we talk in terms of the number what is a large data or another thing can we convert this number into tangible information just look at only 1 exabyte of data is 90 year of hd video if you want to analyze let us say some video data and it is there so only 1 exabyte of the data is a 90 year of hd video do you have 90 year to watch and analyze that data first of all just realize, realize this okay so <clears throat> this was my second chapter which was about the kind of unprecedented scale of the data we are dealing with so now i spoke about the public, uh, the artificial intelligence touched upon what is artificial intelligence briefly and then we are whether we are making a move from the manual solution or manual calculation to the machine led and the machine supervised and then i spoke over public health and the data i am generating in the chapter 3 i am trying to bring them together to make you understand whether ai and public health whether it's a match we used to call the match made in a heaven in a positive sense only with an exclamation mark or no that is for you people to decide but let me put forward this so ai in public health is it at the right time do we have the right tools and do we have the right techniques available in order to solve the public health problem as i told you that we have different kind of the data sources video is available textual data is available audio data is available whatsapp data is available so now we have a different different data sources basically right previously you used to have only maybe questionnaire data or some handful of the data yes fine you can manually collect it and do it and then okay fine submit your report but now data sources are changing the speed of the data everybody of you must know about the data speed so much of misinformation was spreading and then so much of information you used to want to pass out so many people were making a move and you had to make so many provisions to the people so look at the speed of the data and i showed you one example in one minute how much data is gen being generated then data size 
size obviously we used to say that even if the data is in megabyte or maybe 100 sample size those sample size we typically used to do some sample size calculations but in the time of internet the whole of the internet is the source of the data and now we have to club multiple source of the data and the data size is increasing drastically we cannot put a benchmark sort of on the data that okay this much of the or this let us say this much of exabyte of the data can i call it as a large data set maybe in today's term i may call but tomorrow this very definition may change and that is why we always called big data in big data we never put a limit on the big data in big data we talk with the speed the veracity variety all those things different things we talk we do not talk about the sizes now so we are moving beyond the sizes and maybe the traditional sample size calculations also but not in all the cases mind it not in all the cases those will be there we need to identify where we need to apply artificial intelligence where we need to go with the traditional setup only right now in today's time when we are living so if you are committing certain mistake or some wrong decision there is so much of noise and clamor on whatsapp social media all those things so the cost of delaying a decision not to take some public health initiative immediately so look at china has hold the decision did not release that the virus has spread or this is the problem and what the whole of the world has to pay the price so look at the delayed cost of all those things resources uh you can say we are in the best of the time but the worst of the time as such resources are increasing but for the public health it's by and large is maybe decreasing itself right so this is maybe a conundrum artificial intelligence at the same time its computing capacity is increased theek hai now we can make many calculation so the computing capacity has increased previously never had the capacity to store such a the data and now the data is available online another thing we never had such a robust digital ecosystem internet speed is so good still we are crying that okay it is slow but it is making progress fine analysis technique there are so many analysis technique which has been developed over a period of time now it's a time to implement them and the funding has increased in artificial intelligence also right but still we have dearth of artificial intelligence experts who are working in the field so that way both are the same thing right so public health where speed Excuse all me, those sir. have been good evening sir uh, sorry to interrupt uh, but there Please. is a little echo coming is it coming to you as well or is it just me no not to me okay sir sorry please continue right thank you so now this is it so you must be saying this is just you are maybe this is your imagination that the public health and artificial intelligence is a match made in heaven can you give us an example oh yes the covid 19 which was a monumental public health challenge and it demonstrated the potential use of ai that ai has so much of the potential so where the implementation of ai has expanded and many government are now putting aside the fund for the usage or the implementation of ai based scheme the uh, if i am correct the government of india's ayushman bharat scheme also is using ai where they are deciding whom to give or whom to make eligible okay fine this people if those are check mark that okay fine so they are using it for the identifying the people whom they have to pay right so you can look at these example this was only possible not only possible but maybe its reach has increased we have gone beyond a certain point from collecting data manually to the person to person level and population based survey or clinical and then were sharing our information we were quick to share information also so this was a very recent example where we used it now this was one typical example but still you going to ask the question whether to use it or not to use 
I find the perhaps one of the major challenge is or the bottleneck is it is perhaps on the people's policy maker and public health researchers bucket list, but not on the priority list. COVID-19, we think that yes, this was one of the kind and this has passed, but it was a fad maybe. But and now let us go back. We human beings, we do not, we are on guard when something happens. We are alarmed, but we don't take the decision unless and until it comes to us at somewhere when it becomes a very difficult to breathe, right? So it's not on a priority list. Why? But the question is why? This may be most of you also know, but the question is why it is not on a priority list. Perhaps one example could be the dearth of expertise in this area. It's a niche area which have just started recently. We have very few people who are working in some few, few top institute. And that is where the expertise is not available. That could be one example. Another example is we are just still talking in the air. So we don't have structured curriculum, which is integrated into our maybe UG or PG program of the public health, maybe. So we have dearth of the structured curriculum. Forget about those. We have dearth of even structured artificial intelligence workshop. And when we are teaching the workshop, we are teaching them Python programming or some programming language. No, that's not what a public health researcher need to know. If they have to learn the Python programming scratch, they'll break their head actually, basically, and they'll give up. They'll say, no, we'll not use. Okay. So perhaps we need to design the structured curriculum, but how to design in today's time, that's also we need a bigger thought. The third thing is we are living in an information overload era. We call it as an infodemic also, where information is coming from all the direction and we cannot able to make a sense whether what is important, what is not important, what needs to be retained, what needs to be thrown out. Right. It is finding sort of a needle in the haystack. That could be another. Then is we as a human being a resistance to change. We feel, okay, fine. I have done this much of things. I'll take a laid back approach. And I have learned this method. We do not want to challenge ourselves. We are not comfortable in being uncomfortable. Right? The people who become comfortable in being uncomfortable, they only explore these kind of the things, basically. Because previously, it's an unconventional path. And our evolution has taught us not to take the unconventional path that might get you killed. But which is not true in today's time. So that is why we still resist basically to go. Now, when we talk about making a processing of this information, information load, we need to understand the rules of the game have changed in today's time after the internet or after the strengthening of digital ecosystem. Now in the part of being a digital ecosystem, Information growth is happening exponentially wherever we as a human process information linearly. We cannot keep up the pace with the internet in getting information. I'm sure even if you'll be looking at only one, maybe let us say WhatsApp only on the message for the entire day, you'll not be able to catch up all of your message from all of the group. Attention to all of the people. You have to carefully think about and make your digital universe. And that is where actually most of us are doing wrong. Most of us are frustrated. We do not find our focus. We are living in the FOMO world, fear of missing out that we'll do, we'll miss something if something is going to happen. But what are then we need to learn about ourselves? First of all, you need to learn about the human brain. So if you read the book by Daniel Kahneman, Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman is a Nobel Prize winner. It's an amazing book. So he said, fast brain is a monkey brain, which work on a fight or flight principle. So this was historically true for our evolution, because if you saw something scary, you run or you fight, you take a quick decision. And that is where this is the major driver in your engine. Something threatening has come, you fight or flight. But as we started making a move and living in our world is changing gradually. Now we are living in a very, very protected society where so many digital devices are there to protect you and to guide you. 
So we need to think rationally what needs to be consumed. Slow brain, slow brain is the brain of learner where you take a decision think carefully rationally okay am i doing it right like i'll tell you one quick example of this thing uh i you i love running basically long distance running so what in the normally the principle is basically what we feel is if we start feeling huffy and puffy okay we start feeling tired and our heart rate start increasing we just put in last minute effort to sprint that's a wrong concept if you want to go for a long distance running. For short distance running, it's a good concept. But for a long distance running, you can just slow it down, control your breath, and then you can go a longer distance. So you will not be knowing these things. You will be telling, go fast, which is perhaps. And that is a kind of a thing we are not learning. So we need to know, first of all, these. And the this is being exploited by Mitchell, the thumb or the emoji sign which is provided by you, WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, is basically that, where you feel happy on scrolling something. You're looking for something. The monkey brain is looking for something that you have done something tangible in a gratification. Okay, be mindful of that. Know thyself. Human brain is for creativity. Don't cling to the information. It is not to remember, retain. In today's time, if you'll be thinking, how many of you I do not know forget about the office meeting? How many of you keep on forgetting your boss has told you something? How many of you are forgetting that the grocery list or something? There's so many things in the brain. But that is where you people are wrong. Maybe perhaps you're not thinking carefully. The rules of the game have changed. Now we have calendar. Make your calendar. And then do work as per them. Make a to-do list. At what time, what should be done? Make a schedule for something. You have to write, okay, fine. This is a particular time I'll be writing. That's it, done. Deal done and dusted. You want to make a habit of going to the gym or start a certain new practices, assign a specific time, assign a certain specific exercise you want to do, do it. Don't retain the information in your brain. It will become overload because our brain have a very limited capacity to store three. Uh, we used to call it as a five plus minus two chunks of information, right? But now, that has also changed. In today's time, it's only three plus minus one chunks of information which we can retain. Okay. So don't cling to the information store it as soon as it is coming. You have to reply to somebody in a certain specific time. Make it a note, add it to your calendar or to-do list. You'll be calling this person on this particular day. That's it, done. Forget about it. Once your quick memory or this monkey brain is unloaded, working memory is free from all these distractions action you'll be able to concentrate so don't retain remember then the last thing is information now the time of today previously historically you have to remember most of the information so you kept on collecting that okay whether i'll get this information or not and our history is told but now you just control which information to come. Don't take all the information that is available on the internet. You're going to get it. Carefully craft the information because this has become the very basis of our survival to succeed in today's world. So you remember these three principles, then you will be in a happy state of a mind. Otherwise, you're not able to concentrate. Now, the only constant is a change. So you must be asking the it is fine. You are preaching us that, okay, these things have changed, but okay, fine. If I have to learn about the skills to venture into the machine learning and artificial intelligence, do I need to know something extra basically besides what I told, what is machine learning and artificial intelligence? No, you don't have to do. The only thing is what I normally also call as de-skilling, some of the conventional things which you have to unlearn maybe, then some of the Concepts such as maybe statistical analysis or those, you have to upskill them and then reskill maybe in a computer. Uh, in the computation, you have to need slightly more. You have to reskill yourself also. Just putting in a, some different concept. I also call this as a learn, unlearn, and relearn. Okay, now you can do easily. Previously, we used to resign from our jobs and do everything, but now maybe when snacking culture is there, videos are available, you can do this. Uh, but I'll tell you maybe 
further also that how you can optimize your learning basically but communication before internet very few limited people used to communicate we used to see them in a tv they used to be a very high profile people maybe actors politicians or scientists on a certain forums but now digital ecosystem has given a voice to everybody now everybody can communicate so mind your word so now more and more communication is not important it is what you are talking about that has become important where and when to communicate that has become problem identification the real game is basically problem identification you need to identify problem right collaborators today itself also I, i always i find it difficult to convince the people to do some multi centric project for the arti- on the artificial intelligence base because i need to every time tell them what is the usage of it so definitely you need to look for the right kind of the people who are having the right kind of the mindset but due to digital ecosystem you have different different people so you have to find the right kind of the collaborators then the data sets so data sets still are comparatively less there are wide set of data but for many we don't have the expertise and for them we need to build our capability so start from the known data set whatever is already available to you so these are the only basic fundamental skills which are required but in a refined way comparatively now so <clears throat> you must be saying okay fine these are sort of esoteric way for which we need to keep on making a move so what are the way through which we need to learn now the time is not there maybe to relearn every time the conventional way hire somebody some expert or take an admission and go there so we need to mix and match the our conventional and unconventional way to learn what is that so if i come to conventional and unconventional the first conventional way of our is through pubmed books schools college where we are going so we are learning through that so now maybe we have come up to a certain stage where we say that we do not have the time to go to maybe let us say academy or to take a particular course so we we'll learn from through pubmed or maybe books right yes maybe you can take it but to my understanding this is sort of a difficult approach which we should take but maybe in a certain moderation none of us have that much of the time to sit exclusively and read through this and look at the dense material now the second thing could be now you can learn from the world's expert coursera edx where there are brief brief lectures and then ultimately you can uh, go to these lecture perhaps i can suggest you two lectures to start with maybe one by the stanford is computer science 50 cs50 i think known as cs50 which is computer fundamentals so definitely need to better understand the computers the second is the lecture by andrew ng that has been taken by uh, the the leading number of people uh, the uh, uh, i think more than some 100 million or i don't know i hardly remember the figure Uh, that day somebody was talking but this is the most favorite lecture andrew and you can start the only thing i have against that is the lecture in that is somewhat very long okay so but otherwise it's a wonderful other thing is nowadays which we should really exploit ai blogs because a scientific language is esoteric for the niche kind of the audience you may not understand what is a gpu what is a cpu what is a prompt what is a generative ai what is foundation model right what is token you need to understand that the basic of that because you are entering into it so to read ai blogs right so i can suggest maybe one or two ai blogs if you are listening to uh, 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 one ai blogs is ai tidbits confessions of the code addict so these are two or three which i have identified you may identify others also and then open repositories of because google's a deep mind and all the cutting edge work is available on open repository so you can look at those resources the only thing is they are painfully slow to read they are filled with that esoteric jargon advanced terminology knowledge and we do not know perhaps that is right also 
another thing is what i have found is important is ai podcast and youtube videos it has become a very rich source of updating your knowledge podcasts are wonderful things nowadays on making a move while going in a car or washing your laundry or prepare your dinner you can listen to them basically so when somebody say multitasking so maybe i do not know whether human being is capable to do multitasking but yes maybe washing the clothes listening to a podcast it will clarify some sort of the concept one suggestion i can give you is a practical ai is a wonderful uh, podcast which you should listen if you're thinking of entering into this now let us come to our final chapter maybe hopefully all of you people are waiting for so thoughts my thoughts on present and future first of all advice to next gen collaboration we should believe in collaboration over competition perhaps for millions of year we lived in a society where resources were limited but we are now in a surplus era so maybe you should collaborate that is where we should share the knowledge and move over quality over quantity don't go into the number game that okay somebody is publishing this many i'll also do no some quantity keep on improving quality then discussion over discreteness discuss discuss with your peer it is going to refine your concept rather than working in the silos and see my ideas will be stolen by somebody not at all okay so if they'll steal your idea they may not able to replicate your methodology they may replicate the methodology but they may not able to write the way like you like and history is a testimony to the fact that we are we may be kind to the people who are the first but then there is always room for all the other and we always prefer quality over quantity or those who have started and apple can be a typical example of this apple is perhaps not the first one to launch the cutting edge technology but whatever they come with the refinement always most of us love it right so now so contribute toward the open source now since human being were consuming the data but now human being itself have become a data you are a data to somebody right so work on the data security principle maybe what are those ethics now maybe perhaps it's the right time rather than preaching we should practice the ethics also then we should build toward the explainable ai which explain right now most of the ai model are the black box model which we do not know what is there inside it is doing something and giving us something right so we should maybe perhaps cross that era and then we should think of the nature also like to give you one example the image which you saw in the my slide in the first slide in my introductory slide was prepared using chat gpt now to tell you this thing in the fact now in order to generate one image with the chat gpt is equivalent to recharging your mobile full mobile recharge so just one image imagine it how much load it is taking how much resource concentration so what we me along with my student tejender what we are doing is we are also contributing in our way we have developed a ml guide software which is going to do the coding automated for you it will be just like an spss package where you will be doing click and drop it will be available hopefully we are in a publication stage so it will be open soon so that way one we are contributing democratizing the artificial intelligence and machine learning second thing we are doing in terms of the data security is now since all of us are becoming data so data security has become important so the google has proposed a concept known as a federated learning in 2017 so we are also exploring that concept and tejender's thesis is basically on the federated learning where what are the mechanism how we can protect the data without sharing the data how we can give the benefit to the consumers so we are doing our bit you can also take the plunge and maybe do it now so the today's present will always be tomorrow's problem right that's always there once it cross a certain threshold it become a problem so be mindful and flexible to update your hard drive which is your brain so if we divide known and unknown into the quadrant of 2 by 2 the first thing which is there available there is no known maybe you know that artificial intelligence is important for public health that is known known to you let me relate with this this 
this concept only known unknown you also know that you are not good in programming right that is unknown known to you right second thing is but perhaps you did not know that statistics is a sort of the foundation or the basis of the machine learning and artificial intelligence it is being used repeatedly and they what they called as a scientist as the uh, confusion matrix and all those things is nothing but two by two contingency table of sensitivity and specificity so those are unknown known which is sort of a bonus you know couple of things already of the machine learning however we need to be mindful of unknown unknown like internet was healed as the solution has become a problem now so many unknown is going to come into the future which we do not know and we cannot prepare for the contingency i'm just telling you that yes be prepared for that right so don't be rigid in your id and accepting no this is uh, this is not going to be the future this is not worth it just keep your ideas open that's it we homo sapiens started our journey of life by safeguarding our bodies okay now it is high time we prioritize our most precious asset the brain so my thoughts for the future is we have started our journey with the manual tools which were available we were doing the manual labor now we are living in the era of multiple tools where multiple machine learning tools whether manual or machine learning tools are available to us but in the future we need to have a master tools i need to have somebody a software or an agent or a robot which can mimic what i want to do it i want it to be a surgeon i want to study it i want to look into that kind of the study analysis and it should dissect the knowledge on my behalf and then it will present me a succinct version which can and then it can stop the information which is coming to me right so it should mimic my personality and we are going toward that direction so human being will be relevant <clears throat> now my departing note ai is not a panacea it is not going to solve all the problem of humanity consciously consume create and iterate digital ecosystem to personalize and improve your life you should always remember one thing about ai and in particular about the tool the creative tools are always novel shiny and ever changing whereas creative process is always eternal never changing and remain stagnant so that is where you need to solve the problem these are just the tools okay but you need to change the tool with the changing time second take home message would be automate your work you just automate your work routine work right outsource your labor in hyper communicated collaborated and connected world you need to have a certain idea but you cannot grasp the concept just use the internet to take the concept don't ask internet to prepare ppt for you use your own thoughts and then maybe the hard labor you should do like you are previously we used to manually arrange referencing but now we are automating it through the end note or maybe through the other software the final departing note is to use or not to use ai is not the future it's already here take the plunge and improvise with the time because this has be this is routinely being used in screening of the patient in uh, maybe robotic surgeries have also come into the picture in public health it is being used government of india has started using it and many of the government has promised it so use it <clears throat> now so what is my take home message i have just one take home message so maybe once you joined the session you felt that okay that the fine today we are going to learn something new so you were charged up and then you said Buck, you buckle yourself up and then you said okay come on so then ultimately in the middle of the segment or when the session was about to end you said okay i have to hang on for just a little bit more of the time and that's what the beauty of the human mind is that yes we yes just keep on holding then ultimately now when you are coming there almost there at the end of the conclusion but mind it there will always be bigger curve ahead okay you will learn something so then you may comparatively you will find that you many things you do not know perhaps the domain of your knowledge or the universe of knowledge is keeps on expanding similarly 
the knowledge of your confusion or the the domain which you do not also keeps on expanding so having this thing i thank you iapsm academy connect to give me a chance to speak on artificial intelligence these are few of my thoughts thank you very much thank you so much sir for giving your valuable time and giving us a lot of knowledge about artificial intelligence probably chat gpt also cannot help me find suitable words to thank you on how much you have uh, given an insight on artificial intelligence i am very happy to share that we have got around 250 responses and questions from our audience sir but because of paucity of time i think so many questions and answers to them will take another session ahead of this sir we look forward to seeing you again with us sir and probably then i can take up all the questions and we can go ahead coming to the end i would like to take a moment to thank our pg coordinating team and all the office bearers for supporting us in this pg lecture series we encourage you to become a member of ipsm if you are not yet one please do subscribe to the ipsm e connect channel to stay tuned to our further events as the moderator of this session this is dr priya vani signing out thank you everyone thank you so much sir thank you so much